September is going to be an action-packed month for games. As we get closer to the next-gen console launches, there's still plenty of games coming out that will get you excited for the here and now. Hi, I'm Matt from Fanatical, and today I'm going to take you through our picks for September game releases. These include in-depth strategy titles, faithful remasters, and much, much more. But before we get into the hot games launching soon, don't forget to like this video if you find it helpful, subscribe to the channel for more game previews, and visit fanatical.com for deals on new releases. Eight years after the previous Crusader Kings game, the Grand Strategy series returns on September 1st. Choose a royal or noble house, and personalise your king to rule the way you want. You can be a violent ruler, or side with religion by creating your own. All of this is in aid of you conquering a map that stretches from Iceland to India. Be careful though, because the realistic gameplay will punish you if you decide to go against your nature, which will cause stress for your king and more. You'll also have to train an heir, or decide on an appropriate guardian, and train them into your worthy successor. The game's a realistic take on Middle Age warfare, as you experience knights, peasant revolts, pilgrimages, viking raiders, and much more. It's not just warfare that you've got to think about though. You can seduce other characters for political power, and recruit agents to spy and murder anyone who stands in your way. Who <laughs> said being a king was easy? I certainly didn't. And Paradox's take on the task is certainly not for the faint of heart, with big decisions needed at every turn. Dieselpunk real-time strategy is coming to Steam. Set in an alternate reality 1920, Iron Harvest is a single-player co-op strategy game where you have to mix tradition with technology at the end of the Great War. Iron Harvest's story spans more than 20 missions over three campaigns. You'll be in the command of three diverse factions with over 40 unit types. Plus, nine heroes and their beastly companions will be joining the battle. Some may not look much of a threat, but they do big damage. Others look the real deal. Just look at those deadly mechs. As well as the many units you've got to command, you'll also have to build your base and protect your production and research from getting attacked, whilst you blast buildings to shreds. How you do that though is up to you. You could go with my favourite approach of destroying everything in sight, or if you're more patient, a stealth approach is possible. If you're still not content, you can choose to play competitive multiplayer, where you try and defeat a rival in a selection of skirmish and challenge maps. Expect lots of mech on mech action during this, with only one winner. Square Enix's take on the massive Marvel franchise is launching on September 4th. The superhero team of Hulk, Iron Man, Black Widow, Captain America, Thor and a young Ms. Marvel will be smashing, flying and hammering their way onto PS4, Xbox One and PC. Though don't expect the game to look like the MCU characters you love, this action-adventure title is inspired by the comic books. The story will be unique to the game, where the heroes are no longer super in the eyes of the public and instead have been outlawed. In typical Marvel style, they need to come back to save the world, as a mental organism designed only for killing, or MODOK for short, creates an Avengers level threat. The game also contains additional characters through DLC, with Hawkeye already announced as part of the post-release roster. You might have also heard about the controversial decision to make the Web Slinger Spider-Man a PlayStation exclusive. These, as well as the original characters, will be able to be upgraded in four key areas, melee, range, defense and heroic. As well as having special heroic moves, the gear and upgrades will be your choice and allow you to play with each Avenger in your preferred style. The game isn't just single player campaign either, you'll be able to head into missions from the war table. You can also dive into other modes, such as the 4 player co-op mode Warzone, or test your skills with the shorter Drop Zone game mode. Tony Hawk is back with remasters of his first two games. The remasters will be launching on September 4th, nearly 21 years after the original Tony Hawk's Pro Skater released on September 29th, 1999. It's also the first non-mobile game release since the disappointing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 in 2015. Developed by Vicarious Visions, who made the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, as well as previous Tony Hawk's games including the PlayStation port of Pro Skater 4, they've teamed up with Neversoft and obtained the game's original code which ensures that the level geometry is the same as the original games. It's safe to say they're pulling out all the tricks for this one, as all of the 19 levels have been reproduced up to 4K resolution, and all but 3 songs from the original soundtracks will return, plus 37 new songs. Speaking of tricks, popular moves from later titles such as the Revert, Spine Transfer and Wall Plant will feature in the games for the first time. There's also updates to the roster, with several new pro skaters joining on the fun. You can now nose grab as the highest paid skater in the world, Nigel Houston and more. If you think you've got the skills to pay the bills, then you can create your own skater. Or, if you'd rather, you can create your own park. Remastered with stunning new visuals and refined gameplay, Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning takes the hit fantasy RPG from 2012 and brings it to modern day standards. 
If you don't know about Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, then it's created by New York Times best-selling author R.A. Salvatore in collaboration with Spawn creator Todd McFarlane and Elder Scrolls IV lead designer Ken Ralston. It's a star-studded development team that's paid off as it currently sits on a very positive review rating from over 10,000 reviews. The action blended magical and melee attacks which fit seamlessly into the story, with you able to evolve your character class throughout the game. You'll also be able to finish opponents off with Fate Shift kills. These brutal kills are not too dissimilar from fatalities in the Mortal Kombat series. The customizable classes offer millions of combinations. You can mix skills, abilities, weapons and armor to your heart's content. As for the story, you're going to play as the first warrior ever to be resurrected from death. Not stopping there though, the remaster is going to come with all the DLC from the original release to give you more than 100 hours of gameplay to enjoy. The weapon wielding, minion destroying Sam is back. Shooting is never far away when Sam's serious stone is involved and the stakes will be raised in this action packed prequel to the series. The new game engine means there's going to be over 10,000 enemies on the screen at one time. 10,000. If ripping through hordes is your thing, Serious Sam's going to be right up your street. Our hero once again faces off against Mentor's minions, but this time there's new foes to shoot in the face. Take on the Belcher and their deadly acid vomit. Ugh, lovely. Or shoot through the stylish orange jumpsuit wearing Processed, who are going to run at you like the madmen they are, as well as memorable enemies from previous games. Don't worry though, there's a new arsenal to help you. There's a crazy automatic shotgun, and you can level up your weapons to get the explosive lock-on rocket launcher. If you're more of a vehicle person, then don't fret. There's motorbikes, crop dusters, and other forms of transport that you can turn into your personal killmobile. Because, why wouldn't you? Baldur's Gate returns. Divinity Original Sin 2's creators are promising a next-gen, party-based RPG experience with the new Divinity 4 engine. This will bring more detail to the world than previous games in the Baldur's Gate series. The plot in Baldur's Gate 3 is an original Dungeons & Dragons story, focusing on a mysterious ability awakening inside your character from a Mind Flayer parasite. This will be reactive to decisions, as you can choose to turn against the darkness, or embrace corruption and become the ultimate evil. Apart from your character's struggles, you're also going to be caught in the middle of a conflict between devils, deities, and otherworldly forces, and your actions are going to determine the fate of the Forgotten Realms. If you prefer playing with friends rather than having a single player experience, you can combine your forces with up to 4 player online multiplayer. You can also split up and follow your individual quests within the same game. As for the combat, it's based upon the D&D 5th edition ruleset. You'll make choices in turn-based moves, where you can pause the world to plan your next move. The game uses role modifiers, combat cameras, expanded environmental interactions and a new fluidity in combat that makes strategy the number one priority in this RPG. The early access period will originally launch with Act 1, which promises to be three times larger than original Sin 2's first act. According to the developers, this will be approximately 25 hours of self-contained content with six player classes supported and five origin characters to recruit. There's currently no date for the game coming out of early access, but it's been stated by Larian Studios that it's going to be at least one year before the release of 1.0. Now you know that, you won't have to roll for intelligence. There are picks for the games releasing in September. Are you getting any of them? Let us know in the comments below, and if you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more. Thanks for watching. Goodbye!